What's up, guys? Come on in. We're going to wait for a few more people to come on in. Hey, y'all. Happy Sunday. It's saying poor connection. What's up? <laughs> Welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. We have a exciting show for you guys today. Hey, everybody. I'm excited. We have Mary Angel here today. So welcome to the Nikki Rich Show, everybody. Make sure you follow us along on Instagram, the Nikki Rich Show. Go to our YouTube, subscribe to Nikki Rich Show TV. And we're going to bring in our guest, author, philanthropist, Mary Angel. We're going to bring her on in. We're gonna see if she's in here. Mary, I'm trying to request her now. Mary, if you have to request, honey. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm gonna bring you in. Hey, y'all. Hi. Welcome. How you doing? Hi, everybody. I'm doing great. How are you? Thank you look you. nice. Thank I love you that so red. Much. <laughs> Welcome here to the Nikki Rich Show. We honor to have you here 2023. <laughs> <laughs> We've been a long while. Thank God we yes. made it through a pandemic. And you believe it? We made Thank it through a pandemic. God. Thank God. Well, first off, once again, welcome. You have been, as always, you know, been nonstop making it happen. You recently, you know, took a trip to South Africa. Wow. Congratulations yes. Yes. on that, that was, you know, that, that voyage. Changing. And, you know, not only that, you were able to connect with so many people, you know, for the love that you love to do, which yes. is writing and books and everything that you love. And it's like, it's just following you throughout the world. So congrats to that. I don't know what's, it's tethering. I don't know what happened. Yeah, it, hear me? it went out. Can you hear me? Yeah. It was a, um, when I tell you it was amazing, it was amazing, especially to connect mm -hmm. with other mm -hmm. people like myself um, that was doing other things besides that. That is, um, actually, mm -hmm. we got to go to a shelter in um, Botswana and to go to a women's shelter where it's for domestic violence uh, victims. And it was different because I didn't really think about the fact that they have the same issues yeah. over in a different country. And to share with the other authors that experience was really life changing to see because there's a great need of so many things that um, we maybe haven't even thought about tapping into. So I'm just, you know, it was a it was a very life changing, amazing trip, um, and to be with so many different authors and to see um, what their journeys was, why they started writing, and how it led them to the TED Talk yeah. in South Africa. Um, now tell us about the TED Talk. I mean, not everybody get to do this. You know, they not everybody get to speak. <laughs> you know, especially TED Talk is major. Not only just in the United States, but you got to do a TED Talk in the homeland of Africa. I mean, tell us about that experience. Uh, that was uh, very, I was nervous because I had been trying to get off into the tag talk for yes. a, almost like two years. And I kind of gave up on it, you know, because I was like, it was, mm -hmm. it's not an easy process. Um, and you really mm -hmm. got to be ready for that. And so um, 
to be able to be one of the panels on that yeah. TED talk in <laughs> South Africa. Uh, that was a whole nother level. So God is intentional because what mm -hmm. I had tried to do on my own, when I gave up on it and I said, okay, you know what? I just, I'm just going to stick in what I know because this is just not there. Um, the opportunity arose without me even knowing it. I was going on a tour for a book tour. I had no idea until later that I applied wow. for the book tour to do a TED yeah. talk. So I got, I started getting training by, with a South African uh, trainer from the South African University where we held it at. And it was just like, when I tell you it was amazing, it was like, God, you are so intentional. He mm -hmm. knows what we want, what we desire. And even though I didn't think it was obtainable, it, it became um, beyond uh, um, unreachable. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was right at my door. And at first I couldn't see it. And for God to actually put it in something that was packaged in su such yes. a luxurious way, I never thought that I'm trying to find a TED Talk in the U.S. You know, and God said, no, you're going to get to TED Talk, but you're going to get to yes. it in another country. But, but look at the path that and you have been going, though. You've been, you, you've been pouring into yourself, but blessing other people along the way as well. And things like that happen, you know? It's like you was blessed. You know, you got all your fruits in Africa. It's, it's like right. what you deserve. Because that's you know? what it felt like. Because all that hard work, the late nights, the right. writing, and everything you were doing here, you know, they just really poured into you there. It really, I just what you're saying, I felt like that because I had been investing so much into helping, because I don't like just the fact mm -hmm. that I got to become an author, something that I did never think it happened for me. That's why I've been on a journey to yeah. sharing it with others by doing the children's cap collaborations, making those children authors. And then I went on to decide that I was going to help women mm -hmm. to, you know, who really wanted to do it. Um, when I saw a book collaboration, I was like, let me, um, you know, give and sponsor someone else to be able to come to a book collaboration because a lot of time people have monies that they don't understand about investing in themselves um so i just decided let me find some, when i see a book collaboration that you know i feel like is affordable mm -hmm. for me to be able to sponsor someone um i so far have started out and i sponsored two women that now are authors and so um that book is is about to be released any a moment from amazon called the woman's heart um, Pastor Alicia Stokes from Positive Directions is her book together and me and other women and two of them are sponsors. So I thank God that now I got the children and two adults yeah. and I'm going on to do more. But to me, God bless me, like you said, because I have been doing a lot of due diligence to make sure that other people come up, even if I have to give yeah. them that boost. You know, but what I mean? you I'm also okay with that. at the same time, like I said. It's been an investment of yourself. You've been investing in you, you know? And when you invest in you and other people see it, that you're able to help other people. Like, this is what I did, or this is what I'm doing. And the right. path, you, and you had a plan. Exactly you why didn't I do just it say, because... oh, hey, I want to do this. You have a plan in place, and it's been following. Yes, you might have uh, ran into some bumps in the road or what have you, because we all got challenges that we face, but you stuck with the plan and you still yes. got, it's, it hasn't stopped, you still going, you know? And it's just <laughs> elevating on that road, on your journey. Yeah, you're right, I, and that's the truth I have, and most mm -hmm. people don't know, I have a brain injury, and um, I don't make excuses. I told um, I was not going to allow myself to be limited from my domestic mm -hmm. violence that even to this day, um, I started an agency out of my domestic violence that I suffered with my uh, divorce. Um, I still am going through it, but in the midst of it, I've developed a company called Professional Advocacy LLC, and I um, just recently became a SAM mm -hmm. contractor for the federal government. I've become a certified contractor for the state of Wisconsin so that I can do, um, you know, get contracts to do a bigger things on a bigger level in the community. And even in the United States, certified to because do that's why it. I became a federal contractor.
Right, right. Because, you know, I figure if I'm doing it with my mm -hmm. own resources right now and I'm able to affect people that I can, you know, as many as I can on a bigger scale with the right funding and the right people and resources around, yeah. um, I know yeah. that I can help a lot more because I'm looking for some changes mm -hmm. in our communities. I'm looking for hurting people mm -hmm. to become empowered. You know, I'm looking for broken people to be able to now soar out of the brokenness yeah. into the place of healing and wholeness, because this is not the time to, you know, that's why I named the book, <laughs> The Proud Young Writers. Yeah. Though it was birthed out of the pain of a child, I decided that I didn't want that mm -hmm. to be the child's identity. And so that's what I'm trying to do through the help of God is to be able to place yes. a new identity that they can still achieve, that you don't have to be your pain. You don't have to be whatever story you was dealt. You can change the trajectory of your story because I'm mm -hmm. a third generation of welfare. I'm a foster kid that grew up, never thought of a parent at, pregnant at 12. Well, yeah. Who would ever think that I would have two proclamations from two different mayors President. and a lifetime achievement award from President Biden and Kamala. So who would think that when I was a person that had fibromyalgia, degenerate disc disease, um, and real bad in depression, you know, just coming from so much abuse to God changed it. I'm talking about, and it uh -huh. don't take a lot of time. It just take your yes. It just take your surrender and willingness to God's will and knowing yes. that he has a plan for you. He do. He have a plan for our life. Even though, like you said, we have obstacles. Now, don't think mm -hmm. that I don't have to press through because I do. I have to press through a lot of things, you know, and people will be surprised what people are experiencing that is have platforms or have different things that they're it. Yeah. Hey, you get more attacks. You do. You do. You, you get more attacks. The, the devil, you know what I'm saying, and situations and things arises even the more. But it just motivates you, you know? to keep going. You're like, okay, that is going to stop me. <laughs> I mean, and that's, you know, I look at you and I look at how wonderful and successful how God has mm -hmm. um, shown you as a person that has persevered through so much. And, and mm -hmm. I'm talking about a bounce back is something else. I've seen the bounce back is something else. And so I always just keep looking at people who have success, but I also look at their journeys of trials mm -hmm. and I see how they bounce back. And that's what motivate me to continue. And I'm just, everybody in the audience, just know that there's a bounce back for you. Everybody. There's and shout out to everybody back. that's watching right now. Tiffany Dixon, Valerie Holyfield. Hey. Lady Sunshine, Fast Light. I see you guys, Nick Hamilton, LA, Media in the House, King Solomon, Epic Entourage. We got a lot of media in the house. What's up, y'all? Definitely connect with, you know, Dr. Mary Angel. <laughs> and, um, you know, definitely connect with her. That's everybody that's tuned in right now. I see you guys, L Lainey Lane, Kitty. Kisses. Hey y'all. Hey. hey guys. Welcome. Everybody saying hey. <laughs> now also you have helped <laughs> others to write. Your daughter, like you mentioned earlier, you were talking about your pastor friend, your daughter, you know. Tell us a little bit, you know, about that because that's amazing, you know, getting your, your children involved. Yeah. Um um, what it what happened is my mm -hmm. daughter have a, a unique story um, of her own that was you know a journey of some dom some domestic violence a lot of rebellion uh, to just do things her way you know how we have a path for our children but they got their own minds and they be deciding what they wanted so she got on a journey mm -hmm. and she got off of that and she came back on and she had little children back to back and that was a setback mm -hmm. for her to be able to go to school and do what she wanted to become a nurse and so you know she 
persevered real hard and you know she's in nursing school she got her cna and she got you know, for bottomless ekg you know she's on that path and so i just was telling her that mm -hmm. you need to write and encourage other young women other young you know you are 25 years old you know how many young girls who streared off of their path who may be coming out of you yeah. know relationships that ain't the best with little bitty babies that they can too make it and they, they don't have to go a different way mm -hmm. that there's a path that they can get back on and so she it, it took look that was an all-night journey for me to get her story wrote and she was like mama i got writer's <laughs> block i said you never wrote before you better write this story <laughs> you know and i stayed up with her till five o'clock in the morning until she got it completed and i was like a teacher in the classroom you know um she would write something be like is this good enough i said listen it's good enough because you're doing it. You don't need to be perfect. I told her when people, like when, when Michael Jackson started out, he wasn't at the mm -hmm. Oscar Award or the Emmy Grammys Award at that time. He started out where he was. They started out at Roosevelt High School talent show mm -hmm. and they rose mm -hmm. above. Start I said, where start where you are. You know, don't look for perfection. Just start where you are. You know, and don't look for perfection. Just look for the fact that you got it exactly. done. Exactly. And so, so five o'clock in the morning, she was done. And so that was a blessing to me to where my daughter now is an author in a book with me, you know, that was uh, life changing. And right now, most of my yeah. grandkids are authors. Now I've, I've accomplished making my grandkids uh, authors. I got three of them that I got to uh, get a hold to their mothers, but they, got, you know, that's the, my, my son's children, but I made sure that my grandchildren are authors, yeah. you know, as well. And they've been on the show too. They need to understand not just, yeah them to just I, i'm trying to teach children not just to read mm. books but to also know that they can write yeah. their own story you know and i want them to understand that what they're writing is mm. important we want to mm -hmm. know what you're thinking we want to know your great ideas and what you imagine in your world or what you would like mm -hmm. the world to be and so i just encourage writing not just reading mm -hmm. but writing which helps with their reading so that's that's my my daughter's journey. I can't wait because we are kind of going to do some more projects together. You know, I'm trying to pull my son into yeah. it. But he's just he loves rapping. You know, so. let him stay in their little lane. <laughs> but I'm going to get him into it. I'm trying to get my my niece and I got my niece and my daughter have agreed mm -hmm. to do a book called The Family That Heals because we got a lot of healing that needs to take place in our family. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of things that people don't deal with. I'm trying to use writing to, as a form of therapy to help us yeah. all kind of get through some stuff without being upset about each other's, you know, visions of what we went through um, with one another and how do we get to a better place. And I'm going to use writing as well. So I'm trying to abduct all my little nieces and nephews and my children. So I'm I'm trying to work on that now. Ain't yeah. easy to get these young folks it's to come free, but It's happening. I'm, I'm excited. looking forward. So what's next for Mary Angel? <laughs> uh, what's next for me is I am um, pretty much getting ready to um, start just getting into the schools and I'm working with the NAACP right now. I just got on the committee. Um, we're going to be, you know, doing some things, working with the government to try to bring some, uh, funding in to make some changes. I mean, like to mm -hmm. really get it to the people to help them because it's, it's one thing to have a plan and to say, we're going to do something yeah. and the, the city is still the same. And those programs just have like events and then they pass out stuff to people and then that's it. No, I'm talking about real mm -hmm. tangible life changing things. So we are uh, trying to, uh, my, my job is right now is to work with um, Dr. Shauna White to be able to work with the NAACP in, a, in, a, in our governor to try to bring about some real changes because yeah. our city needs it. And I'm going to be doing government contracts with the federal government because I want to implement a, a literacy program and, you know, that would affect all around the, the United States, not just here, a, a proud young writers, you know, a literacy program around the, the states, different states, because I want children that are minority children to know that they mm -hmm. can too be a part. They have to know that life is not just about them being in trouble or having struggles. And I want to be able to empower them with financial and yes. restitution to help them. Uh, we always talk about reparations. I want to be able to find a way where monies and the resource can get in their hands, mm -hmm. you know, to really help them. 
to see it. Because it's one thing for it to come to a politician and then no, we don't no, see it in the community. No, never see you it. Know, mm -mm. We don't, we, I, mm -hmm. you know, I am sick of all of these carnivals in the summertime and yes. all this little, listen, we need some resources in the house. Kids need shoes. Kids Everything. need clothes. They be need, you know what I'm saying? They be needing the things that they need to survive. You know, they parents be needing gas money. How about we give uh -huh. gas cars to parents to get to work to keep them from having to be, you know, the gas is and high. And you even know, stuff now, like that. think about the schools and lunches. Lunches is changing. You know, it, we it is. To, you can and either have free lunch or, you know, pay or what. They don't even want to give lunch no more. And the kids who don't even have it ain't that sick. they can't so, even barely eat so you know it's so much it's so much and that's that's what i want to do i want to be able to actually get the i want the mm -hmm. resources to get to them i don't want it to be sitting in an organization that promotes a lot of um propaganda and a lot of uh, mm -hmm. uh you know marketing strategies in the community and then they throw these events for everybody to come and get some kind of trinket or t-shirt or you know the clown was there and we had games all day long and a <laughs> pony ride list no we don't want that no more we don't want no movie night in the park forget all that stuff that could be a bonus but what we need is we need kids to the have resources. stuff that they need to survive and their parents to have the tangible mm -hmm. stuff that they need to survive because that's the breakdown of the family. We just need to get some tangible resources in the hands of the community mm -hmm. parents and you know what I'm saying, people that is trying to survive the, the community, especially yeah. with the, all of the violence that's going on, you know? We gotta do something about the violence. You know, back in the day we had the uh, we guardian did. angels used to walk our streets, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? Because the police couldn't do it all. And that kept a lot of neighborhoods safe. You know, I'm talking about even if we have to get private um, you know, people that are mm -hmm. security, private security to protect the neighborhoods. We got to do something. We just can't be constantly having uh, war zones and our children have to play. And now summer is coming. And I worry about the children on the streets and not having things, in, you know, in place to protect them and their families. It's, it, I'm just troubled by yeah. it. And those are the things that I feel like we need tangible stuff since we don't have enough support from the police department because yeah. they're overwhelmed a lot of them and then some of them are so aggressive towards the people that you know until we get that relationship we got to have some more things in place to ensure safety and also to get mm -hmm. resources in the house not in some committee yeah. or in some organization's bank account that, yeah. that's, that's how i feel about it because my organization bringing out my dollars you know what I'm saying, that I've been saving to put into the, into these people's hands. And I have truly can say I have not used no no uh, promotions, uh, you know, things to take money from people mm -hmm. or to extract money from being in programs that I create. Those created programs, I make sure that I have what I need to actually carry yeah. out if they parents participate or not. Because I know most people don't have it. And most people don't they, even really don't care, care about stuff now. They they they're too busy. Working. They're not even getting they trying a to, lot of people. They don't care. They don't care. Right. And they're not even there. So when you get to talking about something and they know that they got to figure out how they paying their rent and here you come trying uh -huh. to do something nice with their kids, they they be wanting to do it. But sometimes they just be exactly. like, I got to worry about how I'm going to pay my rent. I, you know, I do that another time. But if you come and say, well, don't worry about it. We got that if the child can participate. That's where I want to be because I don't want to put loads on parents. I want to take some pressure off and also help the children, mm -hmm. which makes the family better. <laughs> it just makes it better. And that's what I want to do. I, you know, and so I'm, that's my goal right now. That's where, um, that's where Yay. Mary Angel is headed right now is to get the real help into the households, not into the agencies I'm, I'm i'm just we got enough agencies all over the place a non-profits everywhere mm -hmm. but that's getting millions of dollars and i'm like where are the non-profits when i got women that is needing a place to go and they can't even go nowhere because shelters are booked it should be somewhere where they can call and get a hotel to, to get mm -hmm. them to a hotel until the shelter have an opening just to make sure them yeah. and their children are safe so those was i'm talking about what you got 
$500,000 to help women with domestic violence problems. And then when they need a mm -hmm. place to go, there's no money. There's no shelters open, but you got all the money. And you know what I'm saying? And all they can get is just talk to on the phone on 1-800-HELP-YOU line just to talk about your problems. They know they problems. They need, some they need somewhere safe, safe yep. and a start over. So that's what I want to do. And that's my goal right now yeah. is to work on trying to get resources into the actual houses and not into a bank account that somebody is uh, mm -hmm. lavishly using and only manipulating the community by showing, uh, you know, events that make you think that people are really getting help when actually that's all they got. That the is so that you keep true, doing. Mary. Yeah, it's so true. Now tell them where they can find you, connect with you. Yes, you can connect with me. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Mary Angel, and then on Instagram, Mary Angel 1019. And then also you can connect with me, uh, Mary Angel, um, with my phone number. I'm sorry, let me give you my address, 6830 uh, West Villa Avenue in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And my uh, phone number is 414-554-1311. And my email is Godella Petty, is G-O-D-E-L-L-A. P E T T Y at number seven at gmail.com. And you can call, it's 24 hours. It's not a um, line that you can't call. If you don't get an uh, answer, you can just, you know, leave your information and you will definitely get a call back. That's for sure. That's guaranteed. Yes. You will get a call back. She is on it. Whether it's social media, whether it's your, you know, personal, you are always on it. And I appreciate everything that you do, you know, working with the youth, um, giving back, even like your own individual, being able to speak, you know, help others to write. And anytime you're welcome here at the Nikki Rich Show, you already know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love being on this show because this show has helped me. Um, and, and really persevered in my um, mm -hmm. understanding of where I needed to keep going. Every time I come, you know, I've gotten so many directions of, you know, to keep myself grounded and to constantly, you know, keep yes. running for what God wants for my life to help others. And I thank you for giving back to me because it has helped what you have given to me and the opportunity to even mm -hmm. come on the show has helped me in many, many ways and opened up many doors. So I thank God yes. for your show and thank God for you allowing me to come on the show Yay. and thank god for everybody that's here and thank you for <laughs> thank you guys me. for watching thank you so much and it's always like i said an honor and a pleasure to talk with you dr mary angel you know um we're so excited for everything that you got going on and and that you know y'all can go watch the the uh, review and keep watching this uh episode here but as we mentioned before, you have a plan and you have been following it like we all do. You know, we all have, God has a purpose for us all. We all have a purpose and a plan. And, you know, you can tell you on, you on the right path, you know, you, you, you on the right path and you can <laughs> tell because he's just, you know, he just, you just, it's like you're opening up the gifts along the way. You open up the presents. God said, here, here you go, here you go, here you go. And he's just giving it to you, you know. But you are faithful. You are faithful because that's one thing, you know. You trust in him, you thank him, and you just, along the way, too, you're helping, like I said, you're helping others. It ain't just about Mary Angel, you know. You are helping people along the way, and then look when it's your time they're just woo all these blessings coming you're like what <laughs> <laughs> how did this happen <laughs> you know and it's what you deserve true. because of what you've been pouring into others it's your time you're like okay let me go ahead you you just gotta receive yes. it you know it's, it's your time but <laughs> that's when people say it's your time you be like wow well, i didn't expect all this you know, I was just trying to invest in myself. I was just trying to, you right. know, I thought it was just going to be something regular, but then he blew your mind, you know. It wasn't just regular. It was like over the top. And now, look, you know, you're international. Yes. 
not just not just the same. Right. You're an international <laughs> speaker. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Lord. Thank God. Good. He's good. And, and just to become a doctor of uh, divinity, of, you know, mm -hmm. philanthropist and humanitarianism, you know, to get that degree, I have been yeah. working on that since 2018, you know, and I, it was so much that I needed to do to get to obtain that. I had kind of was like, you know, I don't know how much, you know, especially financially, because, you know, I had to pay my own course. And so I just was like, you know, really diligently trying to um, get the work done, you know, because it's a lot of work into becoming a doctor of, you know, in divinity and, you know, philanthropism and humanitarianism. It's a lot of work. And a lot of that work is not just, you know, mm -hmm. book work. A lot of that work is real, exactly. actually, or hands on that you've done it. And you have to have that stuff done. And so when God blessed me, I was, I did everything, but I didn't have the mm -hmm. funds. And like you say, God, God just, I came through for someone else and out of nowhere, God blessed me to get the money and I was able to graduate April 21st this year. And I thank God that, you know, he made me Dr. Mary. Ann. I never thought that I could ever do that. Cause remember I was mm -hmm. a kid with a learning disability. I was a kid that, you know, um, I graduated from um, mm -hmm. high school at 27 years old. So, you, you know what I mean? It was, it was just took me a long time to do stuff and having a brain injury and trying to finish that was another challenge. But with God, I'd never make excuses. I would grab a, a, a college student that did tutoring and I would pay for the tutoring to get some help to understand what I was lost in, you know? So no. I just no. never made you excuses. You have never, you're not even an excuse person since, since I know you. <laughs> I would never say that. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I just, I just, I knew what my condition was. I knew that I was under a neurologist. I knew that I had a lot of challenges and stuff. But you know what? I was like, I'm going to do this because God commissioned me to do these things. So if he commissioned it, even though it seemed mm -hmm. tough, I knew it could be done. And through a lot of prayer, a lot of, um, you know, God give you understanding, wisdom, and knowledge what to do. And so people, okay, you pray, but when you get through praying, <laughs> you got to have a strategy to plan. <laughs> you got to have a strategy to plan. And it's gonna, it, it may require your finances. It may require you to be up all night. It may require you to go. To, I've had to go to another city to get help and do certain things in order to get what I needed because it didn't, they, mm -hmm. it was no resources in Wisconsin. Chicago and Indiana has been a place where I've been running back and forth and people don't even know that I've been running back and forth to try to get things done. And so in my, my doctrine come from yes. Chicago, the school is in Chicago. Mm -hmm. It's not even in Wisconsin. So, you know, it's God has a plan. And then when the plan is yeah. in place, he has provision, even though you don't see it. Abraham didn't see it either when he was told to offer Isaac, but his obedience, obedience to follow God when he got ready to you know think that he had to sacrifice yes. his son he said hold up there was a ram mm -hmm. in the thicket it was a ram in the bush there's a ram in the bush for us so even becoming a doctrine you know being a doctor right now that is a blessing to me because God I can't take credit for that I can only say that my obedience to his will and his way made the way for something to happen that I never thought in my family, I'm the first one ever yeah. in my family. So don't ever think that, you know, because of where you come from, you know, because of what happened to you, um, mm -hmm. that you is stuck and that you can only go so far. I'm looking to go further than this because I'm going into politics eventually. I, we, so we broke up. We don't broke ever up. give up. Yeah, yeah, I said I'm going into politics. If, if that's where I'm leading to. So I'm just mm -hmm. telling people don't never give up because being a, a child that suffered molestation from three to eight years old by a serial rapist, um, you know, having a, a being in my mom's schizophrenic since I was three um, and just being in, uh, pregnant at 12, mm -hmm. having a baby mm -hmm. at 13 years old, being a teen mom 
and on my own by myself and being in foster care, I didn't get to go home from foster care. I had to stay mm -hmm. there till I got grown. So just knowing that, you know, all of those, and then just having only a welfare check for your income, you know what I mean? And not having aunties, uncles, and cousins, and friends, and everybody around mm -hmm. me, I was alone with two children on my own, 18 years old, don't know what I'm going to do, where I'm going to go with a second grade reading and a, a third grade math. Mm. That was where I left off in school. My last school that I went to was, I was in the seventh grade. Wow. So that's why I'm saying, don't never think that where you at. And then I, don't forget, I was in three gangs when I was in the streets. You know, I was growing up, I was in bars, 14 years old, bar hopping, you know, mm -hmm. and just doing all kind of crazy stuff. And then God came into my life when I was 17 years old and he changed everything. And I wanted a different change. Like I wanted everything to go away and be good, but it was a process that I had to go to. So, you know, I just want y'all to know, trust yeah. the process. Just trust his thank process. To everybody just that's thank tuning God in, for Spotlight you. Radio is in Texas, Houston, Texas. Shout out to everybody that's coming on now. Y'all definitely connect with our guest today, Dr. Mary Angel, that's based out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and surrounding areas, you know. So definitely connect with her. Real quickly, once again, give out your uh, Instagram where they can follow you. At. I'm on uh, Facebook is Mary Angel, and on Instagram is Mary Angel 1019. And like I said, if you want to, uh, most people connect with me in my email is Godella G O D E L L A P E T T Y number seven at gmail.com. And then also uh, my office is at 6830. West Villard Avenue, and it's uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53218. And you can call at 414-554-1311. Yes. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you so much, you know, to everybody. Lady D. Polo just joined. Thank you, guys. Hey, everybody. Um, you know, thank you so much for tuning in. First, let us know where you tuned in from. Put your cities below in the in the chat and let us know where you tuned in from you, you know so we can see where y'all tuned in i know i see we got some people from houston but if you're watching let us know where you tuned in from y'all know we in la yeah we in the hollywood area um the nikki rich show uh make sure that y'all are following me the nikki rich show on Instagram. Oh, we got Ohio in the house. Toledo. Okay. Terrell 2021. He said Toledo, Ohio. Okay. Look, we, he's, oh, Tiffany Dixon from Houston, Texas. Look, okay, guys. Oh. You know, let us know where you are, you know, from right now. That's pretty cool, you know. And so many people from all over. That's what I like about social media. You know, people can let everybody know where they at, you know, and it ain't just one place. <laughs> but, but shout out to everybody yes. tuned in. We're going to wind things down, but Mary Angel, you know, you are always welcome to come back to the Nikki Rich Show. It's always a pleasure to have you and to learn about all the success that you have going on from South Africa to the TED Talk to the Presidential Award to you, um, you know, your daughter becoming an uh, author, your daughter and your pastor friend, as well as, you know, you helping others to launch their their books as well and becoming a doctor. So thank you for being our guest today. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank yes. you so much. You Welcome are amazing. May God continue to bless you. And everybody, thank you for watching the Nikki Rich Show today here on Instagram. Thank you, guys. Bye, Mary. <laughs>